All right, good morning and welcome to the monthly polish with the Dented Fender. We are going to be talking today about connecting with God and how to connect with God um, in a more deep way, no matter what it is that you're going through. So I like to start off with humor. I think that is like always a good place to go. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you something I found hysterical. Pull it up. Um, <laughs> so these are all pictures of kids that had meltdowns. And the reason they had meltdowns is because their parents were saying no to something that they wanted. Um, so this little guy has a meltdown because we wouldn't let him swim in the sea. He can't swim and it's six degrees. <laughs> The Golden Gate Bridge isn't actually golden. <laughs> I wouldn't let him eat a battery for breakfast. I love that face. She wanted ravioli for dinner. I made ravioli for dinner. She didn't want ravioli for dinner. <laughs> I can relate to that one. I want this, God. No, I don't want it. Yes, I do. Life is super tough when you can't pick up the book you want because you're sitting on it. I told her she couldn't go inside the dishwasher. I refused to switch the sun off so that his pumpkin could light up. <laughs> I thought that one was classic. Told her no to a bath after she just got out of a bath. He suddenly wanted his cycling backpack which I didn't take to the park because it doesn't, doesn't actually exist. Wouldn't let her eat the bath bomb. <laughs> I handed her the wrong pink marker. He wants to get on the bus. The bus is on the TV. The face of someone whose mom wouldn't let him hold his own poop in his hands. I told him he had to stop biting the cat. <laughs> Wouldn't buy her women's razors. Won't let her throw books at my face. He wanted the yellow cup, so I gave him the yellow cup. Now his life is ruined. The daffodils are gone and I can't bring them back. <laughs> I won't let him eat the cat's food. I love that face. Oh my God, it's priceless. And one more, because she doesn't have more toes to paint. <laughs> I just thought those were hysterical. I love it because kids are just who they are. They do not care. And what I see in that when I look at that, it hits me on two levels. It hits me as a parent, remembering those moments with my own kids when they were little. But it also kind of hits me on a spiritual level, times where I'm like, but God, I want the relationship with this person. And God's like, you don't know it yet, but that would be the equivalent of you eating poop. It is not going to be good. I am saying no to that. And I'm like, ah, ah, you know, or God wants me to go down a certain path and I'm just biting him tooth and nail, even though it's like the right way to go. Or anytime we hear no, when we want to hear a yes, or we just don't get our way for me that's hard. So that's why I loved those. I thought they were classic and it just helped me to remember, okay, I need to be the same way with God where I'm trusting him. And that kind of leads into what we're talking about. I know for many of us, the last several months have just been bizarre and so many different levels. Um, and in the midst of that, it has been really easy for me personally to feel disconnected to God. I've had to really fight to establish new rhythms because, you know, we're on top of each other. We're working out of the home. I've got my daughter. I've got my husband. I don't have a dedicated office the way some folks do. So I can't even go into a room and shut the door. And if I do, it's my bedroom or whatever. I'm looking at laundry, it, just craziness. Then the personal challenges that I've gone through have been many and numerous, um, some wonderful and some very deeply personally challenging. And in the midst of all of that craziness, how do we stay centered? How, we, how do we stay connected to God? 
uh, I was in a discipling group this week with a woman who I have deep respect for and a real warrior for Jesus. I mean, she's been following God for years and she was just sharing in the last, oh, and I didn't silence my phone, sorry. In the last, um, oh, probably seven or eight months, she is just so out of her rhythm that she no longer um, is really spending the time with God that she wants to spend. And she's starting to really feel disconnected. And because things are hectic and because she's emotional, she's also going through a lot of challenges. She just, she is feeling the distance between her and God. And I can relate. This has been, uh, for me, a roller coaster season as well. And I feel like it's been neat to watch God show up and teach me how to stay more centered in the midst of all of that by learning some practical things. So I kind of want to just talk today about the three modes that I think we're always in and how to invite God into those spaces, depending on where you're at. So we're going to start with talking about that. Um, Paul talks in 1 Corinthians 3 verses 5 through 7, and he's kind of talking about, hey, we shouldn't be worshiping people. We need to be worshiping God. But he also lays down some pretty cool principles. So in 1 Corinthians 3, 5 through 7, he says, what after all is Apollos and what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. And he mentions three stages, seed, we we're at that seed stage, water, and growth. And technically, we're always growing. Even if we're the seed, even if we're laying dormant, that potential for growth is still there. But for our purposes, we're going to kind of look at each of those modes and understand how to connect with God in them because we're continually having new things birth in us. And we're in that seed process, that watering process, and that growth process process continually throughout our relationship with God. Um, so before I move into that, what I would love to do, if you'll notice on this app, there is a place where there's chat and you can put the chat in the chat, questions, comments, observations. I would love to have you guys post. And what I would love to hear from you actually is what do you feel like is currently keeping you from growing? Or what are things that keep you from growth? You know, I know for me, I'm going to type in here right now, time. Um, my time can be challenging to keep in a flow. Um, and then the other thing I'm going to say is interruptions. It is really easy for my day to get interrupted. And I'm also going to say my emotions. There's times I'm just emotional and I don't have it in me and I don't care. I just get angry or apathetic or worn down or whatever. Um, I see Marla saying others demands on my time. That's awesome. I would love to see these. So just as you think of new ones, as we go through um, grief and loneliness, uh, Sylvia, I know what you're going through. That's huge. That's huge. Um, so we're going to start with seeds. And with the seed, when we're a seed, when we're buried in that dormant state under the earth, it's a germination process. And we stay inactive until the conditions are just right for us to grow. And then the seed code around a seed pod breaks and a little shoot and a little, little tendril begins to emerge out of the seed and up out of the ground into the sun. Um, and I think for me, when I'm in that seed place, it feels that same way. I just feel dormant. I feel like, okay, nothing's happening. Nothing's going on. Nothing's really pushing me forward. I don't feel like I'm making a difference. I don't feel emotionally connected wherever I'm at. It's in that place where I feel dormant and God is waiting for the right conditions to help me grow to help me break through the seed coating so that I can spring up something new that he's trying to birth within me. 
um, when that coating breaks, something has to give, right? You can't just stay in that seed position. So for me, what has to break is my excuse of time. What has to break are not allowing the interruptions to hijack my relationship with God. What has to break is not allowing my emotions to dictate where I'm going to spend time with God because God can handle my emotions. I can just sit there with him in the emotion and allow him to be there with me. But I've got to find that way to invite in something more. So I would love to uh, ask you to think about what is holding you back? What are you holding on to? What is um, blocking you? Um, and you've shared some, but I want you to think about how in the midst of what you're going through, how in the midst of your situation, when you're in that space, can you invite God in to help you be willing to break through toward growth? And the other thing I want to say is there's nothing wrong with being in that seed position. Um, one of my favorite stories, it's about bamboo, ironically, but you'll, you'll get the connection here in a second. There is the largest bamboo plant that grows. It's a seed and it stays dormant under the soil for five years. That is a really long time. It just lays there and does nothing. And it's not until the fifth year and all this time it's getting nutrients, it's healing, it's storing up energy. God is doing things in that dormant stage. And then in year five, it shoots up so high out of the ground. It goes from nothing to a tree, like full on huge 20, 30 feet tall in like months. It's crazy, but see, it has really deep roots and we're going to get to that in a second. But it's okay if you're in that season where you just feel kind of dormant and disconnected. God is still raining on you. God is still feeding you. God is still doing things within your heart that will allow you to have that breakthrough and growth. Your job is to simply make sure that you're still sitting with him, even in those times, understanding that he gets the challenges we face. He's not out there judging us but it's our job to push through and to try to not get blocked and just not even connect with him. Um, the scripture that I always think of when it comes to the seed, because God does tell us exactly how to grow. He makes it really clear in Matthew 13, three through eight, he says, a farmer went out to sow his seed as he was scattering the seed. Some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop 160 or 30 times what was sown. So, you know, the... Uh, his followers were sitting there listening to him going, okay, Jesus, what does that exactly mean for me? I'm not a seed. And he tells them, when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is a seed sown along the path. And that is something that's so important to realize. The enemy is constantly out there setting up every circumstance he can to pull you away from God, to take away the joy and the growth and the healing um, that God wants to experience with you. You know, or in your case, um, Sylvia, when you're hurting, to hold your hand and to walk through with, with you, to hold you in your loss and your loneliness. That is what God wants. Uh, it makes me want to cry. That's what he wants for you. But the enemy wants to disconnect you in any way he can. And so again, the challenge for us when, our, when we're in that seed stage is to make sure that we hold on, that we don't just let ourselves stay accustomed to being in the soil, um, remembering that the sun is shining and to push past fear and allow God to break you from the coating that is holding you back 
and move you forward um, and to get those conditions right so that you can heal and you can grow. And it takes time. And that's okay. God is perfectly fine with that. Now, sometimes we make the mistake of thinking that doing nothing is in action, but it's not. Doing nothing is actually a very active place. It's checking in with God frequently. It's listening for his voice. It's crying out to him, but it's inviting him more fully in. Then he goes on and he says, the seed falling on the rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they only last a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on the good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. So we've already talked about the seed, but let's go ahead when, when God takes you from that seedling and begins to grow, there you have that breakthrough, you have that moment. That's where we are all striving. Looked at, you've got to water. You've got to water the seed in order to make it grow. Well, how do we do that? You, you've experienced breakthrough. You've had that aha moment. How do you get to that next place. And I would say this, you know, he tells us a couple things that we need to do. Um, one is we can get excited because we, we see something or even just convicted or challenged of, you know what, God keeps hitting me up with this is what I should do, but we keep making excuses and pushing it off. I had that happen for me this year. I knew God was trying to birth something in me. I knew I was in that seed place in an area of my life. And I didn't quite know what it was, but I could tell. I just knew something was stirring in me. And I'm like, ah, I don't really get it. But I just kept praying and sitting there with God. And finally, God showed me what it was he was trying to change. And it wasn't like, woohoo, that kind of aha moment where you're like, this is great. God's got a vision for me. This was a ouch. And I just saw a whole new layer to my selfishness and my pride that I had not seen before. And it was kind of took my breath away. It was not easy. It wasn't like, yay, let's water this so that it can, you know, be weeded out and the good can grow. It was hard, but I had to not make excuses and push forward and not blow it off. I had to start putting down deep roots. And that's, you know, what we want to do. We can't do shallow watering in our lives. And what I mean by that is this. When I lived in Arizona, there were a lot of new homes and they would plant these trees with drip systems because there's no water in Arizona. So you have to have everything on a drip system. But they would only put these around the tree and they were very shallow so the trees never really had to put down deep roots to get down to the aquifer level of the soil down deep. They could just stay at the surface because all the water was kind of right there at the surface. But then what happened was we would get monsoon season, these windstorms, and these trees would just topple over. I mean, they just had no root. There was nothing to keep them upright during the storms. So the first thing we need to focus on when we're growing is making sure, hey, am I putting down deep roots? Am I really digging in deep to my heart, to my relationship with God, so that when those hard times come, the trouble or the persecution, a year like 2020, oh my gosh, talking about a refining year, it's really shown me my weaknesses and my walk with God and it's really pushed and challenged me that my this world is not my home. And what am I putting my joy and my peace in? Because it can't be my circumstances. Right now, my circumstances are tough. I had to dig down deeper and spend more time with God and really make it a priority, even if that meant shutting the door, even if it meant saying, I'm leaving right now. I'm going to go to this quiet spot of a restaurant by myself for a half hour right now and spend time with God because I had too much chaos and confusion around me. 
Um, I took a personal retreat with God. I just took a day. I was like, God, I just need one-on-one time with you. I am feeling disconnected. And it really, really helped. But I have to fight to do those things. They don't come naturally. They're not easy. Um, And it's really hard for me. I'm a pleaser by nature. When somebody says, oh, hey, let's talk. Let's do this to say, no, I'm trying to spend time with God. That's hard for me. And I've had to learn how to really advocate with God because I need those deep roots to function. Um, The other path he talks about is the one that gets choked out by the worries of life, the deceitfulness of wealth. Um, That can be challenging for me too. And when I think of choked out, I think of a couple things. We can overwater um, where there's just so much we're constantly filling our brain with. We're bombarded all the time by imagery, by sounds, by um, ideas and thoughts. And our brain is constantly fighting to filter only what is most essential to us. And I am a person who is very easily scattered. I can be focused on so many things too often, too many things to really focus well on any one thing. (laughs) And to me, that's the overwatering. It's overwatering a plant. If you overwater a plant, you drown it and it will die. The, it, it just rots. It literally rots on the vine. There is nothing that's going to grow from it. I just lost my lighting. Oh, well. Anyway, and that really challenges me to make sure that I'm really focused and intentional, which is one of the things we talk about, of what I put into my head, of what I choose to focus on. Um, last night literally just happened. I was laying in bed and I was tossing and turning a little bit. And finally, my husband looked at me and he goes, honey, are you okay? I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I woke you up. And he goes, no, what, what's going on? And I said, honestly, my brain is just in high gear right now. And I'm thinking through everything I've ever done wrong in the last, you know, in my life. And he literally laid his hand on my head and he said, Lord, in the name of Jesus, please just take this out of her. And as soon as he said that, I was like, ah, of course. And then I was able to lay there and just pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, take these out. Remind me of what is true. Remind me of what is noble and admirable in my life. Remind me of the victories you've blessed me with. Remind me of the the wonderful things you have been able to do through my life, despite myself, and just praise him and thank him. And then I I immediately just was able to go back to sleep allowing God to cultivate us so we can grow, learning to take captive our thoughts and not let them stay in dark alleys, but to, to, to move forward is part of how we get deeper with God. And I want to be really careful to say, if you're in a season of mourning, that is okay. God says there is a time to mourn and a time to rejoice. You know, that it's a beautiful passage in um, Song of Songs or Ecclesiastes, actually, it's Ecclesiastes where he shares about the different seasons of life. And God is there with us through all the seasons. So it's not that you have to be always joyful. It's that you have to remember to hold on to your hope that God has you. He gets it. He loves you. And he fully is capable of moving you forward. That is the hope we hold on to. That is what I hold on to that helps me to get through the times where I'm just overwhelmed and getting drowned out by too much water and feel like I'm choking on the vine. Um, Healthy ways to water that help us to grow. One of them, if your schedule is thrown off, you have got to make it your number one priority above all things to make space to connect with God. And again, that can literally be just sitting there crying in his arms. It can be sitting there singing songs of joy with him, depending on where you're at. It can be the walk that you take outside. It can be you just take that shower and invite him in and you're focused on him as you're getting ready. It can be on your drive to work where you're inviting him to drive with you and you're focusing your mind on him and praying and maybe having scriptures read to you by your phone. It's 
It could be anywhere. It could be your lunch break, that 15 minutes in the afternoon you get that you take time to focus in on God. It can be anything, but it's a priority and you find space. It will not always go perfectly, I wish, but it will be consistent. And really that's our goal. Our goal is never perfection. That's inobtainable for us on earth, but consistency. I'm consistently connecting with God about my life, my circumstances, my relationship with him, other people's lives, the, the people around me. And I'm letting go of my worries and setting them firmly in his hands, which I believe is part of why he has us pray. So if you're struggling, like I have been, the biggest thing that has helped me honestly is to just set up a new normal. What will be my routine? When will I connect with God? And when this happens, how will I compensate for it? Or if that happens, how will I compensate for it? That way I have my A plan, my B plan, my C plan, my D plan if I need it. And I'm making sure that I'm getting that time with God. That is a huge way to water. The other way to water, and we know it, but we forget it so often, is to study our Bibles consistently. Again, not perfectly, but consistently. The Bible is our sword. Faith is our shield and faith comes from hearing the word of God. So those two kind of walk hand in hand. In other words, it's the scriptures we quote that cut down the enemy like I did in my sleep last night. And it is our faith that protects us from the lies of the enemy that reminds us of what's true. Both of those things come from the Bible, reading the word of God. Um, I am talk, I talk about this often. You're probably tired of me saying it, but that's because it's so important. Post scriptures around you that speak to where you're at right now. If you're struggling with feeling alone, grab those scriptures that talk about how you are never alone and God is with you and you post them where you see them often. If others are demanding your time and you're carrying others' burdens, put that scripture that says my burdens you know, your burdens are easy and your yoke is light when you're walking with me and remind yourself, okay, God has these. I don't need to carry them. I can work on them with him, but I don't need to carry them. Um, For me with my emotions, when I get in those negative spirals, it's replacing all those lies with what is true, that I'm valued, that I'm sacred, that I'm loved, that I mean everything to God, that my mistakes do not define me, but God's love for me defines me. Jesus on the cross defines me. Um, And that when I get interrupted, it's not my perfect actions that guarantee that connection with God. It's just constantly inviting him in wherever I can. And if I get interrupted, God gets it. If my mind wanders, and I hate that, and I'm really fighting against it, but if my mind wanders during my prayer time, God, God knows I'm human. He understands my humanness. He is not afraid of my weaknesses and he's not put off by them. Just like those parents we saw at the beginning, you know, your kid's crying because they can't eat poop. (laughs) As a parent, you're just like, I love you, kid. (laughs) They're your kid. You still love them. You still love them. You, you, You know, you laugh about it, but you still love them. There's times I know God shakes his head at me and is like, oh, honey. (laughs) But he says, I got you. I love you. And that's not going to change. And those are the truths that we have to remind ourselves of so that we can get to that season of growth. And of course, once we're in that season of growth, we've broken through the dirt. We're we're growing. We're watering well. We're not overwatering. We're not shallowly underwatering. We're just inviting God in and and listening to him and letting him direct that process consistently. That's when we really start to experience powerful breakthrough, not just the breakthrough of emerging this new idea, but of growth. Um, For me, with that selfishness and the um, pride that I was seeing, it's been really cool to get to that space where God is showing me a whole new way of just being at peace and walking in confidence in his timing because I'm like, let's go, let's go. 
God loves to slow me down and say, hey, not, not your way, but mine. And that's hard for me. And yet I, I get better and better and more at peace. It just, okay. I find myself being more loving when I want to snap, when I want to be reactionary. And that's especially hard for me when I feel justified. And sometimes I'm justified. Like I have every right to get angry and upset. And God doesn't say I can't get angry. What he says is I still need to be loving and my words still need to come from a place of love. That's the challenge. (laughs) That's what I've been growing in. And it's been really neat to see. And it's been neat to see the blessing that has come from that to the people around me and how it's beginning to change situations as only God can. That's the beauty of it. We gain deeper insight. We gain deeper understanding. um, We gain peace and we get to see transformation. And it's really beautiful. And I want to close with reminding us that, you know, he says, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God made it grow, right? So this is a watering event. This is you being watered and and God using this to help you grow, but it's always God that makes it grow. Whether we're at the seed place in an area of our life, we're sprouting, we're at that area of our life, or we're experiencing big breakthrough, and that's where we're at in our life, it is always God that makes it grow, which is why it's so important to connect with him. In Luke 6, 38, he says, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And I love that passage, but it's, it's actually as beautiful as it is, this idea that God has us, that he loves us, that he just takes this pressure. You know, I always think of a measuring cup when I'm baking and I fill it with flour. You know, usually you skim the top so that you get the exact measurement that you need. And I picture this as God's grace. He fills the measuring cup and instead of scraping off the top, he just keeps pouring the bag and pouring the bag and pouring the bag so that there's so much everywhere. It's way beyond anything I could ever need. And that's what he's saying his love is like, his grace is like, that his, his, you can never outgive God. And he, re, he gives this scripture in the context of loving our enemies, forgiving others, serving others, um, and having a giving heart, especially when it's hard. And that is part of how we grow. We give we love, we forgive, we serve, we allow others to give, to serve us and to be there for us as well. And it's in that mutual relationship that God's like, oh man, you live your life that way. It's going to be so much more than you can even imagine. God will always outgive us. He will always outlove us. I love knowing that. I love knowing that God's got me no matter what. So um, this week, my encouragement for all of us, take some special time with God. Ask him where he feels like you're at. One of these probably resonated with you more, whether it was the seed or the, the beginning to break through what's blocking you to start to grow, or if it's how you're watering or if you're in that season of breakthrough, how to really celebrate and harness the power of that to to make a difference in others' lives. Wherever you're at in that spectrum, spend time praying with God about it this week and asking him, Lord, how do you want us to be during this season? Um, This morning, as I was praying about it, I felt like God was saying right now, you're exactly where you need to be. I don't want you doing anything more. This is where I want you. I have you exactly where I want you. I don't want you to do more. Uh, Okay. Put my hands underneath me (laughs) and said, all right, Lord, I'm going to sit here right where you have me. You're growing me in your timing. I'm good with that. Sometimes it's been when I prayed that prayer, God's like, it's time to run, girl. Come on. I need you to do this, this, this. I need you to call this person, touch that life, blah, blah, blah wherever he's taking me, 
And sometimes in that place of being that seed, it's just sit with me, honey. Just sit with me. Read my word, sit with me. Let's get those conditions just right for what it is that I'm going to birth in you through your circumstances, through what you're going through. So spend time with God this week. And if you don't already have some kind of a rhythm or routine to your time with God of reading and praying, please, if I could encourage you to do any one thing, that would be it. Find that rhythm. You need God. He is the only one that can make you grow. And listening to people like me, listening to Stephen Furtick's of the world, listening to whomever, while that helps, it does not replace your personal time with God. So make time for him. Figure out how to consistently squeeze him in. And you know what happens that hijacks your time with God. So when those hijacks come, figure out what is my plan B or my plan C or D. So that in every day, somewhere in the day, consistently, not perfectly, I'm connecting with God in a way that makes a difference. Um, before we wrap up here with a prayer, I'm going to ask, does anybody have any questions or any comments, anything anybody wants to share? And if you do, just unmute yourself. I'd love to hear what everybody has to say. I just wanted to say that um, I've just found some time, um, taking time sometimes to just kind of empty my thinking um, by just, you know, I don't know, just saying like a prayer word and just try to be still and not have all these thoughts bombard me because there's so many demands. Um, I think it's helping a lot um, to just lean into God and just trust God's time. <laughs> That's awesome, Marla. That's awesome. Anybody else? All right. Well, let's go ahead and do this. Let's close out with, oh, Deborah, we're, oh, nope. I thought Deborah, you were going to join in and say something, but you didn't. No worries. I'm going to go ahead and close this off in a prayer. Lord, thank you. Thank you for the things you're teaching us. Thank you for the ways you're leading us. Thank you that you're so patient with us. Thank you that no matter how much we give, even when we feel like We've given so much and sacrificed so much and gone through so much. It is nothing compared to you that we will never outgive you. We will never outserve you. We will never outsuffer you. We will never outsacrifice you. We will never move past the generosity that you give us. I am so humble and grateful for that, Lord. Help us to be givers in our relationship with you. Help us to lean into you, whether we're in that season of being the seed and just sitting in your presence, waiting for you to make those conditions right, trusting that in that process, there's healing and growth and transformation happening on such a deep level, we're not even aware of it yet. Thank you that for all of us, there's that time where we get to break through the seed coat. And, and we experience the pain and the stretching, but also the beauty and the growth of what comes when we're really leaning into you and allowing you to grow. Lord, would you be with each one of us and help us to water wisely that we spend time in the word, we spend time in the prayer, in prayer with you. And to remember that sometimes prayer is just sitting in your presence, not saying a word, just knowing that you know so much exactly what we're feeling even more than what we are we know which is incredible and god in those seasons of growth would you help us to continue to look out and figure out how we can give how we can serve how we can be there for others would you help us to always do that no matter what season we find ourselves in and that you would allow us to invite others in to be able to serve and give to us in return god that is the beauty of the christian walk and we thank you for it we love you, Papa. We thank you for this time. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.